Hello and welcome to the SRC podcast. Joining me, Big M, your usual host, Joe Wilson, Rob Reese, and Mr. John Harris. Good evening. How are you, gentlemen? All good, Em. All good. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah, well, good. Yeah, thanks, Em. Okay, so normally we'd have a little bit chat about how was our week, et cetera, et cetera, but I, I think that's a bit boring. So uh, we're going to jump straight into rugby, and I'm not jumping into Thursday night because there's a bigger result we need to talk about first. So uh, <laughs> RGC 28, Flandavry 23. Joe, you picked them to win last week when no one else did. Come on, <laughs> how was it, but what, how, how are you feeling after that, that pick? Yeah, I, I, I just felt RGC were going to be really disappointed with that first week's performance. Um, and they really have the, the bit between their teeth. And I think I think that proved to be right. I just think Flandovery, for me, probably still waiting for a few players to come back. So there was a good chance RGC could do something. And um, yeah, they did well. They performed well, executed well. So that's, that's, that's all you can afford. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's their one result, though, is it, boys? Because you all said they, they they get the one result every year. The shocks a few, so yeah. some done and dusted. Back, back myself that they get one result in the year and then still went for land every. <laughs> oh, it, it's typical, man. And I said no. They're not going to back up with one. They're not going to back up a strong showing with another strong showing against another top side. So you're welcome for that, Jinx lads. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've just uh, been speaking with uh, Saul Nelson, one of the RGC coaches, and I wish I had spoken to him before we done them previews. Because honest to God, he made me believe in RGC, uh, unbelievably so. He, you know, he was awesome. Like you know, from a fan every point of view, I mean, it, it, it's not even an argument to say you know it's, it was a weak side. It really wasn't. It was incredibly strong. And, you know, only a handful of new boys from the week before. It's like, oh, I haven't got no excuses about these Scarlet saying, you know, kind of re, you know, giving excuses, but no, uh, fully well deserved to RGC. You know, well done. And you know, to be honest, I, I don't think this is going to be their only big result. You no, know, I think it's been something like six, seven years since they beat RGC in the league. So, you know, th- this is. The beginning of something great for RGC. So, if we move back on to the Thursday night game, then so a bit of a tussle in the end. Um, Rob, tell me how, how did you feel this game went? All in all, I thought Cardiff did a really good job of sort of not disrupting the flow because they were playing the better rugby, but disrupting Ebervale's flow and breaking it apart when they needed to. Um, they just stopped everything Ebervale had to break down. The set piece didn't work until 60 minutes, 70 minutes. And the kicking game was dominated, especially in the first half. When you're 17 points behind, you know, away to a good side at Cardiff. I know we haven't backed them as maybe one of the strongest sides, but they're still a good side, especially at home. You, you're giving your, yourself too much of, of a job to do. I just thought I said I used the I used the adjective of strangles. They they when they did they just strangled Ebervale and then sort of it was sort of when they went at ten points up, it never really looked like Cardiff were gonna lose that game. Yeah. I mean it it was a great watch for anyone and you know, Joe alluded to it previously as well. The the pace in that back line was very, very evident. And the scoreline, I don't think it does Ebbuville justice. You know, 29-12, you know, 17-point margin. You know, it, it seems one-sided, but, you know, it was it was more like Cardiff winning a lot of things, probably 53-47 on those margins. So, Joe, I know you were at the game as well. So, uh, what, what, how, did, how did you enjoy that one? Yeah, it was, it, it was a good game. And I, I, I think you're right, the scoreline probably didn't reflect the balance of play. I thought Emma Vale came, the pack competed really well. Um, they probably didn't play with quite enough width and adventure, I guess, when they got into the scoring zone, sort of beyond the 10 metre line, the way that I would have liked to, to, to see. And I think they did attack down the centre a couple of times. You know, they obviously had identified what was a young centre partnership for Cardiff, but they were pretty resolute there, to be fair. And I think where the score sort of ended up getting away from Ebervale was 
there was two length of the field counterattacks where the gas was on show and it was it was pretty evident you know obviously um uh Dowie cross got two this week it was tom bowen three the week before you know they, they, they have got serious wheels outside and um they were able to get on the outside of of, of that ebervale attack and and um you know, as well as the two tries, there's probably, I think there's one or two other occasions where they sort of broke out and went length of the field and bar a lack of a bounce, they, they might have had more tries. So um, I don't think, I think sort of possession-wise and everything else, stat-wise, it probably would have looked pretty even, but I just think the difference was that, that wide. There was definite gas there. Yeah, that's... 100%. I think we all probably thought that at the time. Um, one thing of note to that card is I, they did have two front rowers who have been involved with the Wales squad in the last year, you know, Evan Daniel and Will Davis King. So, you know, I, you know, that, that scrum, that set piece unit, you know, it, it was a weapon. And if those boys do continue turning out for the rags, then, you know, you know watch out. That's all I'm, I'm going to say in this. Um, John, I'm assuming you watched the game on Thursday night as well. So uh, how was it for you as a neutral? Well, I didn't get to see as much of it as I was hoping <clears throat> in the end. The missus was working late, so I had to uh, swap the baby out. So I was trying to kind of watch it on the phone then. But um, I thought what impressed me, some, like you said about the, the length of the field tries, I've seen um, that return from a, a kick by Tom Rice that he went charged up the middle of the field. And then a couple of fans and got the ball up to Josh Thomas, who just gave it then to... Terry Cross, who, like I say, with his pace, uh, just looked amazing. Uh, but what I, I thought massive turning point in that game was the Cardiff, ironically, the Cardiff yellow card. Even though they went down a man, Evervale then had a, it was like 67 minutes scrum on the Cardiff line. If they score from that scrum, they, it's a one score game going into the last 10 minutes with an extra man. But and I thought that the yellow card was harsh. I don't know if anybody else thought he actually knocked it back, or if that's just me, which means wasn't a deliberate knock on anyway. But so that you could say it might be just this time for the penalty from the scrum. But I think that was a massive turning point, and a great try to to finish it off because they could have just sat on that. But no, they went for the the two extra bonus points at the end with good child going in in the corner. So I was really, but I was also impressed. With Everfield driving more from the try they scored, they still look they still look big and strong, and that that looked a weapon. That wasn't no one was stopping that. So I, I do think the score flatters a little bit, as you boys have said. But great game, great tries, and the fair play to Cardiff for killing them up, you know, going for the kill at the end. Yeah. So uh, last point of this game, Stefan Emmanuel picked up the Serena game. You know. Young centre partnership, like Joe has already alluded to, so you know big things expected of, of him in particular. So we move on to the next game now. Aberavan twenty four, Carmarthen Quins eighteen. Now I had backed Carmarthen Quins for this one, and you know e- even following the game live, I thought they, they were going to come back in play. They were gonna they were gonna nick it at the end, but Aberavan stuck out. They they got the win, so. John, you were there live. Um, you probably yep. had a few too many beers to remember all of it. But uh, <laughs> what, what was the experience like? Talk us for it. Well, it was a great experience. Yeah, that was first home game of the season. There's always a an all day for me. I will admit. So I was out from like twelve o'clock in a couple of pubs first as well with my brother. Um, went to club shop first. Got a jersey for ten quid from the. Uh, <laughs> From the reduced corner because the new ones haven't come in yet. <laughs> but okay. um, yeah, it was a lo- nice, nice day for the game. Uh, Quinn started very, very strong. Um, good carries by the forwards to set up that first try for, um, who was it? Sorry, Lewis Morgan. We've got a brace. First one, pick and goes by the forwards, strong carries. And then another one from line out, driving mall. Just, he just, just seemed to spin away from everyone and then almost free in. Um, but Abraham, fair play, got himself back into it. Um, Seawood intercepted after a kickback from Kamarden. Um, then Evo, Scott and Evo chips it over and just pops up for Willem Evans to go under the posts. 
Um, Aspen Evans as well, Reese Thomas, the back rowers, Carrion Hard all day, uh, which that's come straight from a kickoff as well. Then Aspen Evans hitting up the middle, feeds it out wide, and Corey Lewis Jenkins it gas to spare that boy's got in, in the corner. So, yeah, it was another one of those games. So, we've seen this so many times down the tag. Uh, Abraham's first three tries in the first half, and then you're thinking, all oh, second half, what oh, we're looking at this bonus point now, and they don't come. But Quinn's uh, fair play, they kept coming as well, because penalty to stay within a shot, and it was very close at the end. I don't know if you saw the highlights, you know, Quinn's over the line in injury time and just knock the ball forward. So it's it's that close. But a, a good win to get Abraham back on track. Much needed, I think. So that'll give him confidence now, which they're going to need going into Newport tomorrow, I think. Yeah. So uh, obviously, solid performance. I think it was at least to say against Ebbervale and, you know, you've, you've backed that up with a, a good home win against Kamal and Quinn. So positive signs at Abraham. Um Rob, tell me, um, did the Quins really have a chance in this game, or, or was it too far, too gone after half time? Um, no, I think, I think it's one of those ones that probably at the time you would probably say it is too far gone, knowing that what Abraham's game plan is. You know, tag is a difficult place to sort of be chasing the game. Um, but I think what this game has shown is that Kamarthen backed up the. A big win over Swansea in round one, and Carmarthen have got a lot about them. You know, they've they've stuck with an Abraham side. I mean, if if they hold on to that ball at the end, they've got a kick to have a chance of going two from two and picking up, you know, a, a sort of a, a big scalp, you know, in, in the early doors. So, I think <clears> it, it probably was a step too far for them to come back. But they said saying that, I think it was two well structured teams in a game that was actually pretty well well structured as well. Nobody sort of broke broke away from what they wanted to do. And I think that's gonna gonna show Quinns in, in good stead despite the loss this week. They'll they'll pick up a lot of points this season purely from from staying to the plan, which which I know was every coach's dream. Yeah. I mean something I know about the Quinns is that they've got quite a few young academy boys that they, they're really invested in that haven't been able to take the field yet. So you've got the likes of, you know, Will Couch, uh, the under-20s hooker Isaac Young, who, for me, looked outstanding during the Junior World Cup. You know, Ellis Price, who they basically said that he's going to be their 10 once he's fit. And then obviously you've got, you know, someone like Tom Curry, who's yet to feature. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of improvement still to be made in this side. You know, from from the Quinn's perspective, so I I wouldn't be taking you know too much disheartening from from this game. Uh, Joe, did you did you get anything different from this? Uh, no, only that I understand um, uh, the usual captain was missing. I think Reese Thomas stepped up. Is that right, Tom? As captain, yeah, that was very Reece Thomas. Um, that was Thomas. Well, yeah. Yeah, what I what what I heard on the grapevine was that he and um, Aston Evans were just really to the fore, especially when it looked yeah. like uh, Quinns had got some momentum in the game. Apparently, these two just kept stepping up, stepping up. So, um, you know, in terms of your second row and your your captain, that's exactly what you want. And apparently, they were outstanding pair of them. So. Yeah, they were given a lot of targets. They were just four, couldn't wait to carry. Like so, straight away, you've got a target, then you're going forward. So this brings us on now to, uh, I think it was the closest game of the weekend. Bridgend against Pontypool uh, at the brewery. You know, uh, Pontypool's really sneaking it in the end, 29-26. And, you know, uh, I, we seem starting to see a trend here with Bridgend where they, they start in really fast. They get out of the block so quick and they they're just dropping off in certain patches of the game. And in, in that second half, I, I think it is they, they discipline the cost them ultimately in the end. I think it was a couple of yellow cards of, you know, playing 14 man rugby for, you know, 20 plus minutes in the second half. It, you know, it'd be hard enough to try and get away with it in the first half, but in, in the second, it, you know, when those legs are tiring, it, it, it's going to kill you. Uh, Rob, what, what more can you tell us about this one, bud? Yeah, I think it was. This is completely the opposite of Abraham and Quinn's. I think was it the, the lead changed hands five or 
five or six times. And I think Bridge End will be kicking themselves that they haven't picked up a home victory over Pontypool two seasons running. Um, Pool, uh, sorry, Bridge End are looking, like they said, aside, they're setting off really good. But at the moment, they just, they're being picked off far too easy with, with the game plan. Once a side is settling in, and, and, and we've seen it with Newport, and you settle in, you, you nullify the basic threats, and then all of a sudden, Bridge End are relying off some really good play and some sort of big moves to sort of pull things through. I mean, they, they've relied on, on Ed Howley now for God knows how many years at times to sort of single-handedly pull results through. And I just think at the moment that they're looking a much better prospect than than what we thought we were going to see. I think that is that's snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Um, makes sense. I think Pontypool will be very relieved to come away with, with one there, especially knowing that you know, they'd have probably said one victory from the first two <clears> fixtures they, they would have been sort of happy with. Six points is probably the same. But um yeah, I think that's that's one that the Bridge End fans would have would have wanted to keep a keep a hold on and, and unfortunately they just need to keep a bit of discipline and keep a bit of physical structure to their sides because at the moment they're leaking all these points in that middle third of a game and it and it's and it's not getting them away from them because obviously they finish within three points in this sort of instance. But yeah, you, you can't let a side back in and, and sort of let them take over the structure of your game. Yeah. So um one thing I, I'm gonna point out as you know a possible concern for Pontypool and I, I believe that you may have actually alluded to it earlier, Rob, is the current ten. Now obviously we we haven't got all the live you know images from the game, but you know two from five conversions. You no, know, he, he did miss one against Landover in the first match. You know, obviously they're scoring tries. That's all absolutely brilliant. But you know these conversions really do consolidate those tries. You know, is this a worry for Pontypool? Like obviously they've gone over the line. You know against Bridgend, really close against Landover. But you know would maybe an 85, 90 percent kicker really? Improve them? How should they have really done more in the summer? Um, I think it's 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 a difficult one. I think Kieran's come from a good point scoring background. He, he didn't kick too much with Abbeville last year, but he was pretty successful when when he did um, take take a bit more game time towards the latter latter part of the season. He's got a good pedigree with it, and obviously he's really good with ball out of hand. I think he nailed the drop goal actually against Bridge End last season for Ebrey. I think it was Kieran um, that did it then. Obviously he hit the drop goal against Land Ebrey in round one. But as you say, you you just got to sharpen these these sort of areas. That funny enough, it was sort of the talk not from the tee in the Cardiff Ebrey game, but kicking from hand as well. You you start missing these kicks to corners, and you, you start chasing the game. And and I say you you will get away with it, but ultimately it's the sort of the big games that will cost you, and they're effectively you know one miss kick away from Bridgend taking the draw, and then that's that's when you really start analysing just how bad these misses are. But I think over the season they'll be okay. Um, I'm interested to see if Harry Ford gets in at any time soon, because I know back in the summer that was always the sort of the plan and, and sort of how they, they brought Kieran in because of the lack of Harry Ford and Harry Ford drops down. So yeah, it's gonna be an interesting tale. But I think they I think they've got the kickers there. I don't think that's gonna be there. They they worry too much, providing Kieran goes back to to his old form. So uh Joe, tell tell me a little bit more uh you know about this game. Obviously I know you're Cardiff, you know, Bridgen I know it's Osprey's region, but it's basically it's close to Cardiff. So I'm gonna have you cover the Bridgend aspect of this now. Yeah, well, I, th- I, I think they started off really quickly, Bridgend, to be fair to them. Um, I, th- I, th- I think the one thing that stood out about the first game for Pontypool was that they started really slowly, and it sounded as if they'd started off quite slowly in this game. Um, uh, I think I'm right in saying Bridgend, Bridgend received, and is it Collier, the eight, I think, went over for them pretty pretty, pretty quick as well, literally like first or second minute. Yeah. So I think... Um, in, in, in terms of starting the game, Bridgen started off as, as you know as a coach's dream, uh, scoring within two minutes. And I think what what seems to be impacting their games when you when when you look at it is just just a little bit of sort of game now, some bit of game management. So I think if they can address that, um, just sort of get a little bit better at stopping the momentum swings in the game, which Pontypool were able to generate, 
I think you'll start to see a swing in fortunes for Bridgend because there are you know one thing that sort of stands out when you do see their tries. They're they're a skillful side. They're a really quick, skillful side. So I'm confident. You know the coaching group they've got down there and the playing group they've got down there that they'll get results. But I think there's um, you know perhaps a little bit of a betting in period going on still at the moment for them. And you know I think in the next two games we'll start we'll start to see a better better positive outcome for Bridget. So that brings us on nicely to our final game of the round, which was Swansea at home to Newport. First thing I'm going to say is a massive performance for Josh Phillips. Um, you know, everything I've read, everything I've seen, he was absolutely outstanding. Uh, 17 points out of his side's 27. No, nothing to be sniffed at. Ugh. Newport coming away with the spoils 35 27. Obviously, very disheartening for Swansea, you know, having a 13 point lead at half time. You know, it was 20 to 7 at that point. So, uh, John, I'll come to you. T- tell me a little bit more. You know, Newport really rallied in this game. Yeah, I think um, I agree with that. So, Shame for Swansea because they they played really well in this and in the end not come away with anything, which feels a bit harsh. And yeah, like you said about Josh Phillips, is is trying in the first half as well. He just sliced Newport open and went over almost untouched. And you say twenty points to seven and a half time if you Swansea now you at home as well. You've got to close. You've got to close that out in the second half because you know. Fence as well, so you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get like that. 13 points up. Um, but Newport, as we, we've said every week, the, the quality side. Um, and they've scored what five five tries or four tries in that second half. Um, one, of, <clears throat> one of them, my favorite try of the round as well, the hooker Wade Langley, about nearly 50 meters, uh, breaking through dummy. And then that's as everyone in 86th minute of the game. Uh, that was an absolute cracker. So if anyone hasn't seen that, you need to go and have a look at it. Same as Josh Phillips, just try mind. Um, so I feel like there's there's definitely something there with, with Swansea in our back line, I think. I think um, Callum Carson and Harry Houston were linked up well for one of their tries too. Um, so there's something there for them to work on definitely but I think that it's it, it would be a bit gutted they haven't got something out of that game for how well they played yeah so uh something we actually discussed last week is how much of an impact would someone like Morgan Morse have on this side should he come back in and he did indeed come back in so I, I think it's safe to say you know that that boy can do some damage I mean Rob uh Looking at it from a Newport sort of perspective, you know, seeing like I know he's still a baby, really, more and more. So, you know, seeing someone like that who is that powerful and can cause havoc, you know, how how do you really, you know, focus on your own game plan when you know you've got that monster to defend? Um, He'd be good when he grows up, wouldn't he? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's one of those ones. Newport will know what their game plan is. And, the, and I think the Newport wider game plan is around the driving more, the set piece and within three phase rugby. I think the worrying thing for Newport, or slightly worrying, obviously is you know, this they're still top. They've got eleven of the twelve available points, is they've had two slow starts in a row now. Um was it ten nil down at the start of the Bridge End game and obviously thirteen points adrift at half time year. It's it's what we've just said is you can't keep giving sides these advantages because what it will come back and haunt you. And I think that's what we sort of saw the first half. As we said, you know, Josh Phillips, it, it's, I think if you see the highlights package of this game, you could probably pick try of the month and only include this game. You know, that the, the, the hands on, on show. And I think that's where it sort of broke in sort of Swansea's favour was that sort of ragged edge, this throw it about, let's put a bit of risk on it. And it's risk reward. It's high high risk, but it's high reward when it pays off. And I think Newport did exactly what uh, Tyler Morris wanted them to do against Bridgen, play the conditions, control it and play their own sort of, their game plan. Get the forwards more involved. No, don't get drawn into this, let's just throw it about silly rugby. And you can start to see, you can see the highlights going from these 50 metre tries to the to the 20 meter malls coming in, you know, it's, it's like phasing it in. And that's sort of epitomizes exactly what Newport sort of did. They 
they started to turn it on his head, get it get it to where they want want to be. And like I said, it's you know, Wade, Wade Langley with with some some beautiful work on his own, but o- overall that new ball pack did turn it. I think that's how you get on top of someone like Morgan Morse. And you know, good game from from Morse, but you, you get on top of the wider picture and you effectively nullify or you're limiting the threat. So, Joe, I'm going to come to you for final word on this game. You know, w- w- where are your eyes seeing it? Yeah, it just, I, I think we all called a Newport win here and I think Newport will be pleased. There was a good split in the try scored, three from the forwards, two from the backs, I think, um, I think is accurate. Um, I just think Swansea will want to have more time with their parachute players and just get those combinations, understanding each other. Perhaps the game just reflected the fact that Newport squad are used to playing with each other and Swansea's, you know, perhaps it began to show then um, in the second half after the strike moves had been shown once that there wasn't um, that, that there wasn't that sort of in-depth familiarity with each other, the same way probably Newport have got. So, um, and, and, and I think what, what stood out for me as well is Newport's peak in the second half was very, very high. You know, I, I, I take the point they started slowly uh, they were they were devastated in the second half. You know, I think if you're a coach looking at that second half, you'll be as pleased with the second half as you were disappointed with the first half. So um, if they can uh, if they can get an 80 minute performance together, they're going to be a handful this year. Nicole. Yeah. So that rounds up all the results from this past week. If you like what you're listening to, or you think what we're doing is okay, you know, give us a like and or subscribe. You know, it's it's a massive help comment is what we want we love engagement if you agree with us comment if you disagree with us comment we'll answer you back we love a good debate so this now brings us on to this week as always this is a wednesday night recording podcast should be out roughly 3 p.m on a thursday that is our allotted time so you know keep keep that in mind so we move on to the first game of the week which is the thursday night lights live on s federic s4c Aberavan at home to Newport. John, you knew you're Aberavan. I almost called you Newport then. That would have been embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> uh, t- tell me, um, what, what what are you expecting from this match and which ways are going to go? Um, I'm expecting a close one, uh, to be honest. Um, head to heads, I've, got, I've actually written some information down for this for a change. So, like the head to heads at the tag between these two teams in. We've got uh, 12 wins apiece and one draw. Newport have, as much as the tag as we all think of it, as well, I certainly do as a bit of a fortress, Newport have won the last three at the tag, uh, winning both games last season. Um, even gone into looking at the bookies have got Newport um, uh, to win this by 10. So I think it'll be, I got a feeling it'll be a bit closer than that. I think Hopefully, hopefully with these uh, slow starts Newport will be having, they're going to take another week after this before they sort that out. Um, but we can say the same for ourselves. Man. We've started both games a little bit slowly too. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm not going to get to this one, unfortunately, but I will be watching it on uh, S4C Click. Um, I, do, I know the teams have been released, but I've saved them on my phone, so I can't actually look at them now because I'm recording on my phone. So... But I know there is a debutant for Aberavon in this game. Um, although I can't remember his name right now, but not, I'm sure it's one of the the wingers. Um, no, uh, number well, nine. As long as Aberavon, as long as the well, long as Aberavon can on the bench last week, he was match. If they can match Newport up front, um, there's a there's there's some cutting edge behind that. Uh, that Brown pack at the moment, but it's it's, it's stopping that uh, New Zealand, uh, New Zealand, Newport even, that Newport force when it comes because, like Joe said in that Swansea game, when they turned it on that second half, it's it, it is quite something. So, oh, it's I'm gonna I'm gonna go for an Aberavon win. I've got to go with a heart on this one. No, but oh. nobody's nobody's gonna win four games at our ground in a row. So. It's not happening, black and numbers. So I'm going to go Abra have a win on this one. But Newport probably come away with a, a losing bonus point, I think. 
Oh, that, that's generous. That's that's very generous to Newport, I think. <laughs> uh, well, we're <laughs> all mistaken. Like probably going to be the only one who picks us, so. Yeah, I, I think you. I think you might be, if I'm honest. But uh, so we're all making mistakes <laughs> with team names. So you know, that's me and John down. We just got to wait for Rob and Joe to do it. So Rob, I'll come to you now. You know, we've had the Abraham side of it. No, is anyone really you know betting against Newport in this game other than the Abraham faithful? Um, seems unlikely. Um, I th- I think it's an interesting Newport selection. It's not. Is not an expected one. Um, obviously, Matt O'Brien doesn't feature, but a certain Dragons fly off and Will Reed does. And I think that's, that's a key area for me. Carvin Penny at the moment, he's switched between fly off and full back since he's, uh, since he's come, come to Newport. And I think it's all about that bit of a control. And I think looking at the way they set the squad out, Within American football season, I think Newport have gone spread offense here. I mean, Liam Lloyd's coming onto the wing, and I've already spoken about how how much pace he's got to match up with uh, Lloyd Lewis on the other side. Nick Thomas in bit, well, I say a bit more mobile. Sorry, Renard, a lot more mobile than Renard Landman. Um, and I, and I think you can just sort of see where they want to go with it. Ollie Drake coming in in the front row. He he's a really dynamic player despite the size. And I just look at that side and think they're coming out to pick that ball, take it around the corner and get it wide as quick as they can. And unfortunately, I think they are, they are going to get the win. But I think that's that's going to be a very intriguing tie. I don't think this is going to be one that's, because of the Newport start, I don't think this is going to be one that everyone's going to be putting their mortgage on. So I, I am going to assume from that you're doing Newport. Can I get can I get a, a verbal? You can. I'm going Newport, sir. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going Newport as well. I, I I can't see against that. My only issue with Newport going forward is continuity. Um, they made nine changes to the fifteen for the first. Uh, you know, between the first and second game, eight changes now to this one. Um, obviously, massively talented squad. There's, there's no doubt about that. But you know, continuity in that fifteen is, is a massive thing, and you know. You look at sides that don't mess around with their best 15 or their starting 15, I should say. You know, they, they tend to have steady success throughout the season. So Newport for me, but you know, slight concerns about uh, them going forward, even though they've taken 11 points out of possible 12. Uh, Joe, you were the last one on this game. Where's it going, my friend? Yeah, I think... Aberavon for me are up against it because no one's failed to stop Newport scoring less than 35 points in the first two games. Um, and I think p- pivotal to Aberavon's success will be their ability to do that. If they can keep them at 30 points, they've got a sniff. I just think the Newport bench, when it's uh, when it unloads, there's some big lumps in there, there's some quick lumps in there. So, unfortunately, I'm going with Newport as well. Sorry, John. Oh, well, that's that's, that's three nice. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that's 3-1 in Newport's favour you know, well only one favorite. person went for RGC last week so I don't oh, mind being the one that one out <laughs> <laughs> okay so um, just a reminder to everyone this is the first round of the double header so all the fixtures this week will be reversed next week we come on to Ebuvale against Llandavri. Uh for me Llandavri really underperformed in their opening two games Something's got to click, and I, I think Ebuville is the perfect side for them to do that against. I'm really sorry, Rob. Uh, I am going to back Clandavry for this one, so I'm, I'm going to let Rob stew on me, you know, betting against Ebu for a little bit. Joe, I'm going to come straight to you. Uh, tell me where, where are the battles in this one and uh, who are you calling it? Yeah, two really good packs. It'll be interesting to see him. Uh... To see him clash, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to be huge. Um, I mean, the one thing that stood out seeing Abervale up close last week was there's some big men in there. So um, this this is going to be really interesting. I I feel I've, I feel it's going to be a very tight affair. This because I think Abervale will be disappointed with aspects of the game from last week. I think they had they had field position, they had enough possession. They probably just didn't take advantage of it. And similarly, I think Clandovery are going to be seeded after last week. So um, I've got Slandovery with a two-point win here. So all, all I'm going to add into this is 
this is basically just from what I can find from the Canterbury website, is the last time they lost to RGC in a league fixture was the 6th of October 2018. So, uh, you know, that loss is, is going to hurt them. Uh, John, where, are you thinking any different or, you know, can ever oh, will yeah. overcome their, uh, you know, their execution and got lack of execution and composure this past week? Well, they, de- they definitely can. Um, I'm, I'm back of four on this one. I've been back of four on it while you've all been talking, but there. Uh, Bucky's have got front every slight favourites, four to five. Ebervale even money, two points. A head start for Ebervale. I, I, I was I was thinking Ebervale the whole time, but I now the more I think about how pissed off Lanza are going to be after the weekend, I wouldn't want to play a pissed off Lanza every. So, oh, but oh, but I want to I I want to pick Ebervale for it as well. But I, it's a coin it's a coin toss. So I'm just I'm going to say it's Lanza every because oh oh because no. of because of that loss up in RGC, I just think they're going to come down so. Uh, motivated. Not that Ebervale won't be after losing a Cardiff, but I've, I've got to pick someone, and it's literally a coin toss. I'll go land up with this one, but it's 100% whoever's losing, I think, is getting the bonus points. You, you know what, John? I, I think we're going to start calling you Bucky from now on, and you can give us the, the odds on every <laughs> well, single just, game every week. That'll be something else to add to it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so we've had we've heard from three of us. We've all picked land every. I think we're going to leave this game there and move on to the next one. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't do that you, Rob. Come on, but you know, get, get, <laughs> pick up Ebu Vale for us. So it's going to be four land every wins. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. Um, in all seriousness, I know land every lost this this fixture last season, but um, I think we're starting to see the land every side coming through. Barry and what made his first appearance of the season last week. I think we're starting to see. Land every take take a couple of weeks. They're starting to get into it, and as they say, they they're going to be hurt. And I think Ebervale will be as well. I think it's going to be very much a tussle of, of up front. I'm intrigued to see how the weather goes this week in terms of the style of rugby that we could see. It's not been kind now since the Aberavon games, which I know the pitch is looking really good then. Um, I'll be dropping down for this one because this is going to be a really intriguing battle. But yeah. I'm going to be going with heads because I know I went with heart last week and that cost me perfect predictions. So, yes, I, I'm not sure if this is our first 4 0 sweep of a fixture this season. It, oh, I think it is. I'm well, I've, I've killed the pod off, I've ruined it. <laughs> no, I think we all went We all went Newport last week and we against Swansea. Ah, well, there we go then. Memory I, I, Just I the didn't. third time this has happened in two weeks. I didn't expect this to happen, you know, Rob. I think you're gonna, I'm, you know, oh, I'm, I'm gonna talk to Mister Strange, and you're gonna get banned. You know, simple as. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so four, four. Wow, I, I really didn't anticipate that from you, but okay. So uh, move on to the next game, Carmarthen Quins at home to Cardiff. You know, uh, discussed a bit on the Quins earlier. I think there's there's so much more to come from them, and you know, I'm. Just because, you know, of something Joe said a week or so ago, I'm never going to back Cardiff. So I've kind of put myself in a corner by you. <laughs> and I, I've written Cardiff in, but I realise that, do I, do I want to go for perfect predictions or do I want to just, you know, make things fun? I'll make things fun. Go on, Kamal and Quinn's going to win this one. Joe, I'm coming straight to you as our resident Cardiffian. Cardiffian? Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm on the Cardiff side. Hey. <laughs> I haven't actually seen a squad. I haven't actually seen a squad from Cardiff for this year. I don't think. No, they normally, you know, Thursday night is normally the earliest they yeah, come out. Yeah, early, you know. Yeah. Yeah, they're playing funny games. Look, I think, I think if they've got those four parachutes in again, I think they're they're capable again in parity with that Quinn's pack. Um, and as we've seen so far this season, I think the back line is capable of causing damage down at parity. So. Um, yeah, I'm, look, I'm I'm really excited about this uh, this young Cardiff team. Uh, the backs are really exciting. I'm I'm going to back them. I'm going to back them. I don't think there'll be much in it. I think there'll, there'll be one try in it. Um, I just think that Cardiff gas on the outside is going to be it's going to be a handful for everyone this year. 
So I've got Cardiff 30, Quinn's 24. Ooh, one score game. That's a score as well. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah. he's. He, he was kind of okay with his scores last week. He took a photo to show us all. So I, I think he wants to try and get... <laughs> two of them spot on, yeah. yeah there, was, there was one crossed out afterwards, wasn't there? <laughs> I, yeah, I just think he got some... As I turned it, I changed done. my mind, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. He was just frantically searching around for the same colour pen. <laughs> I, tell you, I, I tell you who we didn't mention earlier as well, just, just for Cardiff as well. I know um, Emmanuel got man of the match last week, but... Um, Oh, what was the open side's name? Hud, Nathan Hud. Nathan he got about six or seven turnovers last week. He was outstanding. Uh, if, if if he can have that impact on the game again, I think it'll 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 help a lot. Brilliant. So, Rob, I'm going to come straight to you now to really ruin my party. So, <laughs> the Quins have a chance. You know, is a losing bonus point all they can really hope for? No, I, th- I think they, they do have a genuine shot at this. I think the big turning factor will be the parachute players. I think for me, it's a narrow Cardiff win without them. It's not a significant win with them, but I also think that could depend on the conditions. I know a, a, you know, a bad weather day down at, uh, down at the park is really open. You can't spread the ball very well at all. Uh, I stood there on a Thursday night last year last season and it absolutely hammered down for the Emberdale game and it was not a good sight. And I think that's not where fun, Cardiff it? can do the, the damage. You know, they, they said their back three is full of pace and if, if the weather holds up enough that they can get the ball to them, I think that we could be looking more than the score. But yeah, Car- Cardiff win, win for me for this. So, John, you're the last one to pick. Am I going to be the only one with a correct prediction on this one this week or are you going to join me? <laughs> well, if you're picking Cardiff as well, yeah, you'll be you'll be right on the money. But shocking! I just I can't see um I can't personally see anything other than Cardiff uh, taking this one. I think I think Quinns have got it up front to go toe to toe with them, but I just think Cardiff have got, as the boys have said, already too much behind, too much pace, too much skill, and I think that's going to be what makes the difference in this one. Um. Again, Puckies have got it. Same as the Abraham game at Carthen, plus 10. 5 to 2 for Carthen, 1 to 4 Cardiff. And I, I think they're not far off. I think it's, I'm thinking about 10 to 12 points uh, Cardiff win, yeah. Okay, so that rounds up that game. It's 3 yeah. 1 in favour of Cardiff. This brings us on to the next match, which is RGC at home to Pontypool. Now, I alluded earlier, I've spoken with Saul Nelson from there. And I believe in RGC. I, I really, truly do. That is going to be the tagline from go, going forward. I believe in RGC. You know, massive performance against Cardiff. Highly, highly unlikely to miss out on a draw in that game. And then to do the job over Flandavry. You know, Flandavry was hammering that door down for the last five, ten minutes. You know, it, it was five-point game. And, you know, they had a line out in the 22 and RGC repelled them. So, you know, for those reasons and I gotta pick RGC. I know Pontypool have been, you know, fairly, fairly strong going in. You know, that first game they looked good. They they ground out the win against Bridgen, but yeah, it, it's RGC for me all the way this week. Rob, straight to you. Come on, where's it going? Um, do you know what? I think I might join you on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a punt, and obviously these two are rather well acquainted from the old championship days. Um, oh, yes. but I think. You know, the RGC surface is, is really suiting their, their game plan at the moment. And I think what we've seen from them is an improvement of performance. And that's what the coaches want, right? Early doors in the season. It's it's not always, it's, it's about the results, but it's, it's about the performance deep down. And what we've seen with RGC is unlucky result, solid performance against Cardiff, cracking results, better performance. And I don't think Pontypool has shown enough for me at the moment to say that I'm convinced with them. So I think with you know, with all the travelling and RGC's new found form that's embarrassing us all with the 10th place prediction, that is going to be an RGC victory. Let's take a punt. Okay, John, down to you, but are RGC going to look to get the clean sweep on this one? Yeah, we're all looking like geniuses now, aren't we, with this picking RGC to finish 10th, so... 
But I remember saying those predictions, you know, I'll probably jinx you picking that, so you're welcome, RDC. Um, let's have a look what the bookies got. The bookies got 8 to 15 of RGC, 11 to 8 Pontypool, 5 well, points hey. uh, head start for Pontypool. Oh, you know, if, if we'd picked this game last week, I probably wouldn't have given a second thought, probably would have gone Pontypool, but RGC now, but two. Played two of the best teams in the league, taking one to the limit and beating the other one. So, yeah, oh, still want to say Pont Polo, but I think I'm going to have to go. I'm going to go as you see as well. I haven't backed them so far, and they they proved me wrong in both games. So sorry in advance, as you see, if I bug you that again with my predictions, <laughs> but I think you're going to win this one. Well, we're looking like this. I see Pont Polo getting a losing bonus points as well. I see it being close. It's fair play. All the games have been pretty close in this league so far. I've been really impressed with that. We've been getting a lot of close games. Like, it well, is getting to the point where we're six pointers, isn't it? I think. Yeah. I mean, fair play. We are at the moment. Yeah. yeah, something we are seeing is everyone wants to attack. Everyone is going out to win games. Mm. They're not going out not to lose, which is brilliant yeah. for the product. Brilliant That's for great the game. Stuff. Yeah. So we've got three RGCs and, you know, the man that tried to uh, convince us all the errors of our ways last week, Mr. Wilson. You know, are RGC going to do it again or do you think you're going to back Pontypool this week? Yeah, I think I, th- I think this is a bridge too far for Pontypool. I think they've had a couple of slow starts and I don't think they get that back against RGC. Um, I don't see it being a, a blowout score or anything like that. I think Pontypool will be competitive, but I've got RGC by eight. Mm-hmm. There we go. So a clean sweep for RGC. You know, not something anyone would have predicted at the start of the season. So this takes us on to our final game. Swansea against Bridgend. You know, Bridgend have been really, really encouraging with their performances. You know, I'm back in Bridgend this week. You know, Swansea Swansea have, you know, stuttered, you know, in, in that first game against Quinns. And then they just, they just didn't really turn up properly. You know, for that second half against Newport, so they've shown a weakness in one side in the first game and a weakness in another in the second game. And you know, the improvements in Bridgend, I think, are just too much. So I, I think Bridgend will do it on St. Helens. Uh, John, straight to you for this one, but um, I completely agree with everything you just said there, Big M, except for the fact that I think I've just got a spin in Swansea, you're gonna nick it. Um, <laughs> I completely agree with what you said. Um, I I could just I don't know what I just feel Swansea winning it. So Bucky's have got Swansea favourites one to two, the Gen six to four with six point eight stars. But um, yeah, well, they well they both desperately need wins so from they from this game and this this the game they're gonna they could be targeting both of them so they've got to win this. So it's gonna be close, I think, very close. But I think that. Uh, home advantage for Swansea is just just going to swing it uh, so I'm going to go Swansea with a, another another losing bonus point uh, for Bridgend <laughs> Okay so I, I'm very happy that we've now got opposite choices for the game again Joe, yeah. <laughs> final game, final prediction, tell me what, what's happening but Yeah and I, 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 th- I think um, what's happening in this league as well is you're seeing real sort of bounce back after you know, underperformances. Um, I think Swansea would be really frustrated with last weekend. I just think they'll be so frustrated that they, they didn't they didn't get the win. Um, and I think they'll be targeting this one um, massively. So, uh, I don't know what the weather's going to do. I haven't seen a Swansea squad, uh, but they're another week along and another week knitted together a little bit better. So, I'm going to go Swansea by seven. Swansea by seven, so it looks like I might be the only boy back in Bridgend. Rob, you're the final one. Are you going to save me, or is this going to be another three-one? Um, I, I'm going to tie this up. I think Bridgend are going to sneak this one. I think it's it's the winless gate, is the winless sides derby. The only two teams who haven't got a win yet this season. Um, and I just think Bridgend are showing sort of quite a bit. And I think this sort of what I said about the Swansea sort of throwing it about around the, the high risk, high reward sort of first half against Newport. 
I think this is going to be one of those games both sides do it quite a lot. Um, hmm. How much reward we'll see from it is going to be another question. But I think I think Bridge End have just got that little bit more quality in, in, in the back line to sort of put these chances away. And that's why I'm going to be saying Bridge End by three or four points is going to be a it's going to be a losing bonus point for somebody. There we go. That wraps us up for all the previews this week. So if majority rules, we're going to have Newport, Thunder, Re, Cardiff and RGC winning and Bridgend and Swansea playing out a draw. <laughs> I don't think that's going to quite happen, <laughs> but uh, that, that, that's how we are calling it. Uh, thank you all very much for joining me. Thank you everyone who's listening or watching online. Like I said earlier, like, share, subscribe, you know, comment. We love it. And we'll do it all again next week. Thank you, fellas, and goodbye. Bye, everyone. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Take care. Ta-da.